heard the term prophecy, the prophetic or prophets. Um, I don't know whether or not how much study uh, you may have done in this particular area. I really have three different levels that I, 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 I say that people uh, can be a part of. Number one, the beginning level where they're just starting off in understanding the prophetic ministry, prophecy, personal prophecy, corporate prophecy, prophetic presbytery, prophetic worship, prophetic intercession, the whole realm of the prophetic. And then there's what I call the intermediate realm where people have some teaching and they're not beginners. They have some teaching on it. They've experienced a level of the prophetic. And then of course, the more advanced uh, individuals are those who have been in the prophetic for a period of time. Uh, they're not beginners, they're not intermediate. But whatever level you're on, I want to encourage you tonight and show you the value of the prophetic when it comes to leadership. And um, beyond just being a prophet or prophesying why the prophetic is such an important part of leadership and how this anointing, this grace can actually enhance your leadership, uh, your leadership abilities, your leadership quantities, and what is the connection between prophecy, the prophetic, and leadership. Um, I have in my hand a book. <clears throat> I, I wrote this book years ago. It's called Leadership, Transitioning from the Pastoral to the Apostolic. Uh, and it's a yes. book that describes yes. my journey and my testimony of how our church moved from being primarily pastoral to becoming more prophetic to becoming apostolic. Now, this book is it's no longer in print, but I put a lot of the material that's in this book in a book that I wrote um, uh, on the apostolic. <clears throat> and I also have a, a, a book called The Prophet's Manual, uh, which is a book that we use to train prophetic yes. people. Once all that I, I've learned on the prophetic is in this particular manual. It covers the whole spectrum of the prophetic because the prophetic is more than just prophesying and it's more than just being a prophet or believing in prophets. There's a whole realm of the prophetic that we talk about, teach and train their prophetic activations in this book. There's teaching on personal prophecy, corporate prophecy, prophetic presbytery, which I'll talk about some tonight and share with you my journey in the prophetic. I got exposed to the prophetic in 1988. So I've been involved in the prophetic for about 34 years now. I've been preaching for 44 years, but really got in wow. moving in about 10 years after I began preaching. And it really, it really shifted my ministry, it shifted my church. It enhanced our leadership abilities. It enhanced me as a leader. <clears throat> now you may, you may wonder why, <clears throat> excuse me, a question, <clears throat> why the prophetic is so important to leadership. Well, let me give you a few examples of how the prophetic was used by God in the example of leadership. Now, often prophets in the Bible were called two leaders. Prophets were called two kings. Prophets assisted kings. Kings depended on prophets, especially under the old covenant when everyone did not have the spirit of God as we have it today. Uh, prophets were connected to kings. You have Nathan with David. Uh, you have Elijah, uh, rather, rather Isaiah with Hezekiah. You have El Elijah rebuking Ahab. So many times prophets were called to affect kings but it's interesting that uh, when God told Moses <clears throat> to gather the 70 elders of Israel, this is in Numbers chapter 11, <clears throat> and he gathered the 70 elders of Israel. And when he gathered them, the Bible says God took the spirit that was upon Moses, which was a prophetic spirit, and placed it on the 70 elders. <clears throat> and they began to prophesy. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. I thought it's so interesting that God would place a prophetic spirit on these 70 leaders. Moses, of course, was trying to lead the people by himself, but the responsibility was too, too great. And so God had him select 70 men. And then God took the spirit that was upon Moses, which was a prophetic spirit, and placed it upon the 70, and they began to prophesy. It's, it's the largest number of people that, that are recorded in, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, that prophesied at one time, the 70 in, wow. in Numbers chapter 11. And then you find when God anointed the first king of Israel, uh, when, when Samuel went to Saul, the first king of Israel, that when Saul poured oil upon him, 
saw um, Samuel poured oil upon Saul, he told him that when you leave me, you're going to meet a company of prophets. This is in 1 Samuel chapter 10. And when you meet these prophets, they're going to prophesy, and you're going to prophesy with them, and you're going to be turned into another man. And the story goes that when Saul met this company of prophets, the spirit of prophecy came on him, and he began to prophesy. And there was a saying, is Saul also among the prophets? So I thought it very interesting. Uh, and then after, of course, Saul, God chose David to be the first king of Israel. And David was a prophet. He was a worshiper. He was a prophet. So I found it very interesting in my study of scripture how God would, would use the prophetic, especially to touch leaders. Moses was a prophet. The 70 were prophets. Saul, the first king of Israel, was called uh, and, and he was affected by the prophetic anointing. And then we find David, the first king of Israel. Uh, he was a prophet. And then after David, we find prophets being instrumental in ministering to leaders. Now, all of the kings were not prophets, but we know that David was one. Saul is not called a prophet, but he was affected by the prophetic anointing. And so I thought it interesting that God would use the prophetic to uh, seemingly thrust these early leaders into their leadership ability. Now, I believe there's a reason for that. And I'm going to give you some of the reasons why I believe the prophetic anointing. Whether you're a prophet or not, when you get exposed to the prophetic ministry and the prophetic anointing, and you begin to flow prophetically, it will enhance your leadership abilities. I believe that every leader should be prophetic. Even if you're not a prophet, you should be prophetic. There right. should be a prophetic element in your life, whether you're an apostle, evangelist, pastor, teacher, even deacon or leader, there should be a prophetic uh, element in your life. And of course, on the day of Pentecost, when God sent the, the spirit of God, the prophecy of Joel was fulfilled where the sons and daughters would prophesy. And that, of course, was the result of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. So I often say that the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the doorway into the prophetic. Now we know in the book of Acts, they spoke in tongues, but the scripture says they would prophesy. So speaking in tongues is really inspired utterance in an unknown language, whereby prophecy is inspired utterance in a known language. And we see that the first thing that God does uh, when, he, when he fills people with the spirit of God is he gives them the ability to speak by inspiration. One of the definitions of prophecy is inspired utterance or inspired singing or inspired writing, being inspired by the spirit of God or inspired in a session. A prophet, really, the definition of a prophet was an inspired man or a prophetess was an inspired woman. And this is very important because I believe that one of the keys to being a, a strong leader is to move by inspiration. Uh, there'll be things that God will inspire you to do as a leader that do not come from your training, your theology, your, your intellect, but it's simply being inspired by God. And what the prophetic does, the prophetic really causes you to move more in inspiration. Now, of course, we need the word of God. We need sound doctrine. We need strong teaching. But uh, we also need uh, to be inspired leaders, inspired by the spirit of God, being full of the Holy Ghost. And of course, when they were baptized in the Holy Spirit, it says that the sons and daughters would prophesy. So on the day of Pentecost, we see not only were certain people anointed to prophesy as in the old covenant, but all of God's people, the sons, the daughters, the servants, the handmaidens. And so God really baptizes the whole body of Christ into a prophetic realm. Now, everyone is not a prophet. Some people have the gift of prophecy. Some prophesy by the spirit of God, different levels of the prophetic, but all of us can be prophetic, especially leaders. Because as a leader, now, now what do prophets do? Well, if you study prophets, they had, first of all, they had a passion for the glory of God. Every leader needs to have a passion for God's glory. Number two, they had a strong aversion to sin and iniquity. Every leader needs to have a strong aversion to sin and iniquity. Uh, prophets were, were examples of holiness and righteousness. Every leader should be an example of holiness and righteousness. Prophets, of course, heard the word of the Lord. Every leader should be able to hear the voice of God and hear the word of the Lord. Uh, uh, prophets were people of visions and dreams. Every leader should be a visionary. 
a dreamer. Uh, prophets were strong intercessors and prayer warriors. Every leader should have a strong intercessory prayer life. Prophets were strong worshipers. I believe every leader needs to have a strong worship life. And so when you begin to look at the elements of the prophetic, you begin to see once that element is in your life as a leader, then it really begins to enhance your leadership abilities. This is why I believe that every leader in a local church, whether you're a pastor, an apostle, a bishop, you should have a strong prophetic flow in your local assembly. Now, if you do not, um, you can change that through teaching, through bringing in prophetic gifts, prophetic ministry, by having activations, impartation. There's a way to do that. Our church was not really a prophetic church until we got exposed to a prophetic church who brought teams in to activate us, to train us, to teach, and uh, to really open up our church to personal prophecy, corporate prophecy. And then there was something we began to do in the 1990s that shifted the whole course of our ministry, and it was prophetic presbytery. Now, I had never heard of prophetic presbytery and uh, prophetic gatherings until the 1990s when I got a hold of a book by an author by the name of David Blungram. Now, I believe this book may be in reprint. Uh, B-L-O-M-G-R-E-N, David Blungren. And uh, it was called Prophetic Gatherings in the Local Church. Now, in our church, we, we'd had evangelistic gatherings. We'd had teaching gatherings, prayer gatherings, worship gatherings, healing gatherings, deliverance gatherings. But we never had a prophetic gathering. We never heard of that. There was no one in our city that was doing them. And I'm from Chicago. So we're talking about a city of over 4 million people, a, a large city with a large number of churches, but I, I, I had known no church that was doing it. And so we began to have what we call prophetic gatherings where I would invite apostolic and prophetic leaders that I knew from around the country. And we would come together for three or four days and we would worship. Uh, we would sometimes do a short teaching message. And then I would gather about maybe uh, in three days, gather about 14 of our leaders and we would prophesy over them uh, using the prophets and the apostles who were gifted in the gift of prophecy, we would minister to them prophetically. We'd sit them on the stage, and um, we'd have three or four of the prophetic team. Sometimes we'd have five, maybe five prophetic team members. These were governmental gifts, apostolic gifts, prophetic gifts um, that were able to prophesy. We lay hands on these leaders, and we would take turns prophesying over them. And it did so much... It did, there was so much impartation and so much release in our leaders until we did a number of these meetings because we would only be able to do maybe 14 of them in three days because it was very extensive. We didn't have time to do more. So we'd have a meeting, um, those who were leaders coming up, emerging leaders, we'd have them sit on the platform and we'd just minister to them in prophetic presbytery. The word presbytery of course, is the word for elders. And, and we see this in the life of Timothy and, 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 and Paul. Well, Paul told Timothy, he said, neglect not the gift that is in you that was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the presbytery. And so there was a time in Timothy's life where the elders laid hands on him, prophesied over him, and there was an impartation of a gift. And we saw our leaders get impartations of giftings uh, during that time. They got edification, exhortation, comfort. As a matter of fact, in this book called The Prophet's Manual, I have old teaching on prophetic presbytery, how to conduct them, why they're so important. We still don't see that very often uh, in churches today, but we did a number of them in the 90s, and we ministered to all of our emerging leaders that way. And the impartation the gifting, the encouragement, the edification, the comfort, the confirmation, the strength they received was unbelievable. And so we saw there that even prophecy and personal prophecy with the laying on of hands of, of prophetic leaders, how that can impart, it can shift leaders, it can raise up strong leaders. And this gave us the ability to raise up some very powerful ministers in our church. As a matter of fact, many of, of the sons and daughters that were in those meetings today, they're pastoring large churches 
around the country. They have, they have great strong ministries. They've gone to many nations. And I, 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 I consider those prophetic gatherings to be keys to developing these emerging gifts, these leadership gifts. And so we saw the value of the prophetic when it comes to raising up leaders, strong leaders. Now, if you have a vision as a leader to raise up strong sons and daughters and strong leaders and, and send them out and release them and have a strong leadership team in your church, the prophetic is a key to doing that. It is often overlooked. It is, it is, it is a spiritual, uh, for lack of a better term, a spiritual technology that is not known very much in the church today, but it is something that is very powerful. When you look at the 70, when you look at, 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 at Saul, when you look at David, when you look at these, these old covenant prophets and they're called to leaders, you see that the prophetic is directly connected to leadership. And when you begin to embrace the prophetic as a leader, uh, when you begin to embrace it in your church, have teaching, training, activations, impartations, gatherings, where you bring in prophetic giftings, not just for a prophet to come and preach at your church, but actually to have something that actually impacts the membership of your church through laying on of hands, through personal prophecy, even getting them activated, getting them to flow prophetically, because I believe every believer should also prophesy by having training ex exercises in this book, uh, the Prophet's Manual. I have 125 different prophetic activations uh, exercises that we use uh, from this book to train people, to activate them, to bless them, to get them moving in the prophetic. I've seen thousands of believers in many nations around the world activated in the prophetic, um, released in the prophetic. And, and just as the prophetic has certain qualities, prayer, worship, holiness, glory, uh, righteousness, hearing the voice of God, visions, dreams, when that begins to come into the leadership of a church, the church will take what I call a quantum leap as far as its leadership is concerned. And those leaders will become what I call quantum leaders. They'll become people of, of great faith, great power, great anointing, because the prophetic is one of the leading gifts in the church, or prophets are. Uh, the Bible says first apostles, secondarily prophets. is one of the leading gifts of, in the church. It was one of the leading gifts in the Old Testament. It's one of the leading gifts in the church today. It carries a great amount of authority and power and influence when it's done properly. Of course, prophets are also concerned about character, humility, uh, righteousness, justice. Uh, it's, it's a gift that really emphasizes great character. And you have a lot of leaders that have gifted people, ability, because we need people that are gifted, uh, have vision, dream, hearing the voice of God, sensitive to the spirit of God, inspired by God, moving in inspiration, preaching in inspiration, teaching in inspiration, singing in inspiration, inspired men and women of God, great leaders, but also people of holiness, righteousness, godliness, and great character. And this is what the prophetic would do. Many leaders will say, well, why should I emphasize the prophetic in my church? Well, the quantities of the prophetic are, are indispensable. Once these, these quantities begin to impact your local, uh, local assembly, it will affect the entire church and it will especially affect your leaders. When leaders begin to prophesy, there's a greater authority, there's a greater confidence, there's a greater faith that flows through you. When you prophesy consistently, uh, there's a greater sensitivity to the voice of God and to the spirit of God that helps you as a preacher, as a leader, as an elder, when you have a consistent flow. It's, as a matter of fact, uh, prophecy is also one of the signs of being filled with the spirit. Again, your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your servants and handmaidens shall prophesy. It's a sign of spirit-filled leadership because out of your belly flows rivers of living water and a part of that is inspired utterance. So this is why we emphasize the prophetic so much in our teaching, our training, uh, being in prophetic worship services, singing prophetically, singing the song of the Lord, singing new songs, singing prophetic songs, getting people around the glory of God. It really develops your members to become stronger, to become more sensitive, 
uh, to grow up in the things of God, to move into the deeper things of the spirit of God. The prophetic is always concerned about the deeper things of God, maturity, growth, character, sensitivity, inspiration, impartation, activation, confirmation, edification, exhortation, comfort, strength, uh, the breath of God, inspiration, the wind of God. It brings life, even as Ezekiel prophesied in life, came into the bones, it causes your leadership to come alive. Remember, when Ezekiel prophesied to the valley of dead bones, dry bones, when he prophesied to the winds, the winds began to blow and the dead bones came alive. So the prophetic brings life. You need, you need leaders that are full of life, full of inspiration when they preach, when they teach, when they prophesy, when they minister. You have, you have to be full of life. Uh, it's a life-giving spirit. It ministers life to the hearers. It's a quickening spirit. All of those things are connected to the prophetic. And this is why we spend so much time teaching on it, training, activation, being in a prophetic atmosphere, uh, training people, activating them, getting them to prophesy, raising up prophetic leadership, uh, raising up prophetic leaders to hear the voice of God, to be inspired by God to be visionaries and dreamers, to be strong in the spirit, to be strong in character. These are all the things that we began to learn over 30 years ago, and it changed our church. So many young, young leaders were raised up in our house, and many of them sent out to plant churches to go to nations, and um, it's been amazing, the quantity of leaders. Now, the Hawkins can attest, um, I have sons and daughters all over the country, all around the world, and that didn't happen just because I wanted sons and daughters. It happened because of the apostolic and prophetic grace that I began to tap into. And it was something that came as a result of prophecy, the prophetic, laying on of hands, impartation, teaching, uh, raising up leaders. And uh, it's been phenomenal. Even to this day, I have hundreds of sons and daughters that have sound ministries, strong ministries. Our church was able to birth and release uh, many of them to have powerful ministries, miracle ministries, healing ministries. And of course, you have to be able to handle that kind of gifting in your church. If you are an insecure leader, if you're not apostolic in your mentality and wanting to raise up sons and daughters, if you're a controlling leader, a dominating leader, this will not work for you. You have to have a heart to release people, send people, um, activate people. You cannot be insecure. You cannot be jealous. When people begin to move in the things of God, you cannot hold people down and hold them back. I'm not saying release people prematurely. I've been guilty of doing that. But at least when you see them moving in their gift, not to thwart them, not to hold them back, uh, not to hinder them, not to shut them down, but to facilitate them. Now, I remember one of the major aspects of the prophetic is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 which says, he that prophesied speaketh unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. So the prophetic is really a very encouraging gift. It, encouraging, it encourages people to move in their destiny, their purpose, their calling, their gifting. Um, it encourages leaders. It pushes them. It promotes them. It helps them. It assists them. It doesn't hinder them, hold them down, discourage them, frustrate them. It is a very edifying gifting, um, and it exhorts, it encourages, it builds up, it, it, it comforts, it strengthens, it gives life to, it gives vision, it stretches people, it pushes them out. And this is why I love the prophetic. I've seen leaders who are discouraged, down in their, in their walk with God, their church, and when they get around prophets, genuine prophetic giftings, and the word of the Lord is released. I see them come alive again. I see them edified, exhorted, and comforted again. I see their gifts activated and moving again. I see them being stirred again. I see them getting hope and vision back and dreams back because of the, of the power that is in the prophetic gifting and the prophetic calling. So I want to encourage all the leaders uh, to begin to pursue this, begin to get training. Um, this book is available at Amazon.com. I also have a book called Prophet Arise. Uh, this is called The Prophet's Manual. I have a book called Prophetic uh, Activation. If you, As a matter of fact, if you type my name 
on in Google. I've written over 50 books, most of them on Amazon, books on deliverance, books on uh, favor, books on the prophetic. Um, we have a book we teach on prophetic worship, psalmists and minstrels. When your worship is prophetic, it brings such a glory in your church. When you sing the song of the Lord and sing the new song by the Spirit of God, it releases glory, healing, miracles, deliverance. It brings a, a greater glory in our worship. When people get into that kind of atmosphere of glory, it matures them, it, it grows them, um, it causes them uh, to move uh, in, the, in the things of God. Hopefully I haven't lost this, this connection. Um, let me see if I'm still on here. Okay, I am. Um, it, it, it really, when you get around this anointing, it facilitates the glory realm. It causes your people to know the presence of God, the glory of God, to be impacted, to be healed, delivered, to have more intimacy with God, your members, because of the psalmist, the prophetic psalmist, the prophetic minstrels, when they play prophetically and sing prophetically, it releases the glory, your worship changes, it goes to another level. You're not just singing songs. You're not just having a song service. You're singing the songs of heaven, the songs of the Lord that come directly from the throne of God, the songs that God is releasing now in this present time. It affects your worship. It affects your prayer. It affects your intercessors. Your intercessors begin to learn how to pray stronger, deeper, more by inspiration, visions, and revelation. It affects your preaching. Your preaching becomes more inspired, more revelatory. It, it affects your teaching. It affects your ability to impart, to lay hands, to build people up, to prophesy, to flow. Uh, it's just an amazing, amazing realm that most churches have never been developed in. And one of the ways to do that is through teaching, teaching, teach it, bring people in that can teach and train in this area, uh, and it will really revolutionize your ministry. Now, many of you are already prophetic. I know many of you move in the prophetic, but I, I'm talking about when the whole church begins to move in the prophetic, when every believer is prophesying, when the psalmists are singing prophetic, when the minstrels are playing prophetically, when the intercessors are interceding prophetically, when your leaders are prophetic inspired leaders, that's when you really begin to shift, when your worship, your preaching, your teaching, your whole ministry begins to take on a prophetic flavor. You can be evangelistic, you can be pastoral, you can be apostolic, but when you add the prophetic dimension, it really does take you to another level. So I'm so excited about the, the Hawkins vision to see the prophetic come to the Jacksonville, Florida area. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to come there. I was supposed to come uh, earlier, but because of COVID and the restrictions, I wasn't able to come. But in the future, I'm looking forward to coming and ministering and maybe bringing some of our prophetic leaders to do some training, activating, teaching, impartation in that area. Uh, bless the leaders, prophesy, minister, teach, train. But in the meantime, get the book, The Prophet's Manual. I it's encourage true. you to get the copy. Sure. Just go to Amazon.com. And um, you can get it in a matter of a day or two. Read it, study it. It will really, really bless you. And I want to pray for you today. I want to pray for you today. Father, I bless everyone that is watching today. Thank you, Lord, for the release of your glory, the release of your power, the release of your spirit coming strong even during this Zoom. And the Lord even says this, I've come to perfect that which concerns you. I've come to complete some things in your life, your ministry, your training, uh, your leadership. I've come to add a dimension to you, says the Lord, as you begin to listen and, and begin to upgrade and impart, receive impartation, receive activation, receive teaching and training. I'm going to begin to move in a fresh way in your ministry, new life, new yes. wind, breath, new inspiration, new impartation, new strength, a big portion in the days to come as you open up even to different anointings, the apostolic and the prophetic anointing. For the Lord says many use the titles, but the Lord said there is an anointing, there is an unction, there is a demonstration, there is a function in these giftings that go beyond the title. And I'm going to cause you to experience new levels of my glory, my training, my release, my spirit. Mm -hmm. You begin to move forward. I'm going to begin to yes. develop strong okay. leadership teams and churches around the globe and strong churches that have strong leaders and 
prophetic ministers that will impact their city, their region, their territory, and even the nations of the earth. I've come to stir you up. I've come to challenge you. I've come to impart to you today. I've come to give you a greater revelation and understanding of what I'm doing in this hour, in this proceeding. I come to release a quantum grace and even quantum leadership upon you so you can grow into a quantum realm, a quantum level to begin to increase. And the Lord even says, enlarge your tent, stretch forth the curtains of your habitations, lengthen your courts and strength stake, but you are grateful on the right hand and on the left. So I prophesy breaking out, breaking through, overcoming errors, religion, tradition, things that have held you back and mentalities that have held you back. And I begin to renew your mind and I begin to give you an unction to think on a different level, to think professionally, to be the inspired men and women that I've called you to be. Lord said so there is a shifting, there is a changing, there is a transformation that is taking place in your life, in your region. As I begin to expose you to different anointings and different okay. graces, okay, I'm going to raise of teaching, instruction, understanding, and even your vocabulary, okay, should okay. You, the spiritual terminology to embrace and to understand the things that I'm releasing to you by revelation. And so, Father, I bless them. I bless the yes. whole Lord as they affect nations and regions and leaders in their in their network and those that are joining on this Zoom today. I speak, I prophesy, and I decree faith in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, men, women of God, I, I feel I released what God gave me, and um, you can take it from here. All right. Thank you, sir. We truly appreciate you so, so very much. Yes. Wow. What an amazing amen teaching on tonight, and we're truly grateful uh, to you uh, for uh, being with us, uh, for imparting to us for uh, just ministering the word uh, of God into our lives. And truly, we are grateful. Uh, we're truly grateful for your, the Father and Spirit, amen, that you, amen, have done, amen, uh, just the moments that we met. And I just truly appreciate you. I remember uh, we were on uh, Zoom, uh, the very first one we did, and you, amen, that we did with mental health, and you, you blessed us, amen, you prayed for us, and even in our businesses. And I just want you to know, sir, we appreciate you so much. So what I want to do right now, if I can, amen, I believe we have over 40 to 50, amen, leaders that's on this Zoom tonight, and we're grateful for that. And so what we want to do, amen, we want to do, uh, again, uh, our giving apps, of, uh, Pastor, if you want to, amen, if you can help with that, if you don't mind, amen, uh, the giving, amen, apps uh, it, tonight, if you will. Yes. Yes, I would encourage you to sow into what the Hawkins are doing. Uh, I believe that when you invest in different anointings and different graces, it really brings a blessing to your region and to your church when you sow into different kinds of anointings. We have a global ministry. We do a lot in the nations. We do a, a lot around the country uh, in this aspect of ministry. And the scripture actually says, if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. There is a reward that comes upon those that uh, honor and uh, serve and sow into genuine prophetic ministries. God does have a blessing for those who do. And I want to encourage you to sow tonight if you have been blessed and stirred by what I've, I've shared and has given you some new insight as far as prophetic and leadership. Um, I want you to sow into it and you're really investing in your future. And I believe that when you do that, God will, will mark your seed and that he will recognize that you are in, in, in desire for different anointings and graces to come to your city, your region, your territory, um, and he will bless you in doing that. It's also a way of honoring gifts. I, I've, I've learned that there is no really blessing without honor. Uh, Jesus said yes. a prophet without honor in his own country. Um, there were many widows during the days of Elijah, and there were many lepers during the days of Elisha, but only one in each case was healed, um, and because they didn't honor them. And so we often call what we give a preacher an honorarium. It's a, it's a mark of honor. And when you honor ministry gifts, uh, God blesses you. Uh, he allows their anointings to touch you uh, in a deeper way. So I want to encourage you leaders to sow. Now, I challenge people in giving. And um, I've written a book on, on and, and they mentioned this. I don't even have the book in front of me. I've written a book called Thousands, where I, I looked at the number 1,000 in scripture. 
And uh, I found it to be a very strong prophetic number. It's the largest number in scripture. Even though you have the number 10,000, even the number million, it's the same root word for thousand. The cattle on a thousand hills belongs to God. His mercy is to a thousand generations. They rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. A little one shall become a thousand. The Lord multiply you a thousand times more. Deuteronomy 111. And I, I actually challenge people to sow a thousand dollar seeds. It is really a seed that can break uh, poverty and lack because it is wow. a very strong supernatural um, prophetic number. Now we have number 12, the number of the apostolic, number 50, the number of liberty, number seven, the number of perfection, the number nine, we're in the ninth month, the number of birthing. Um, I've been challenging people this month even to give a seat of 9999 because nine represents birthing and for God to birth some new things in your life. Um, but I want to challenge you with those numbers. Some of you leaders can sow that seed. I know it may seem as if that's a large amount to ask for, and I generally don't do it, but there's a power in that number. And then 99.99, um, which is close to 100, but it's, it's the number of nine, the ninth month, the number of birthing. I want to believe that God will bless even $999 or $109 or $509 with the number nine in it or $1,009. I want to challenge you with those numbers, but it's a matter of honor. Uh, it's a matter of sowing into different anointings that I believe can come and, and help bring you to another level and break you into another realm. The prophetic took my ministry from being just a local pastor into planting churches and to preaching in over 85 nations around the world, um, into releasing large numbers of leaders and also, of course, to um, be able to affect nations and write over 50 books. The prophetic really birthed that in me. So the giving addresses are on the screen. Uh, if you want to sow, please yeah. do so, leaders. If you're not a leader, still sow, because I want to decree quantum blessing and quantum favor and quantum grace over your life. I've been preaching on the word quantum. That's a prophetic word that God gave me this past month, the word quantum. The word quantum means large, sudden, or significant. And I want to pray God would do some large, sudden, significant things in your churches, your ministries, your businesses. Um, I know there are at least three people that can sow a thousand. There may be more, but there are three people that God is directly speaking to. Many of you can sow seeds of $99.99 or, or $999 or anything with the number nine, 109. I want you to be led by God and sow it on the giving address that is before you. And I want to decree favor, grace, multiplication, increase, abundance, prosperity over your ministry, your business, your finances, your accounts. I want to decree favor for land, property, yes. vehicles, transportation. I want to decree favor with your government, with your zoning boards, with the leaders in your city. I want to decree 2 Corinthians 9, 8 that God is able to make all grace or favor abound toward you, that you having all sufficiency and all things may abound to every good work. As you sow this seed tonight, I want to believe that you'll have all sufficiency and all things, and you'll be able to abound to every good work. We're, 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 we're sponsoring water projects around the world. We've, we've dug over 52 wells in 17 different nations. In the past several months, it's amazing what God can do as the word of the Lord comes to you. So sow the seed tonight, and I bless you, and I thank God for your participation. And I pray that there'll be many more encounters to come in your region, your territory, concerning the apostolic and the prophetic, as you honor the gifts that God sends to you by your giving. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Amen. Thank you, sir, again. Uh, and there are people that are sowing. We're going to put the, uh, again, giving uh, the screen back on. Uh, and again, I want to thank uh, everyone that is giving on tonight. Uh, we truly appreciate every last one that is giving. Uh, again, you can do a Zelle. Uh, again, uh, you can also do Cash App. Uh, they're on the screen there. Uh, PayPal, you can go to our truelifeifm.com slash giving, 
and you can give that way. Yes. I, I truly am just grateful. I, I tell you, amen. I thank God for uh, the man of God, amen, uh, that has, has, has truly uh, been a blessing to us. Amen. Apostle, uh, we're in Jacksonville, North Carolina. So North Carolina, we're looking for you. Amen. I'm believing God yeah. for your coming here. Uh, uh, we're hoping uh, in the near future, uh, glory to God, we're looking at hopefully the uh, uh, March uh, and April timeframe. I, I know we need to uh, get with your schedule and make sure that that fits and, and all of that. But we're, as you have already stated, we're going to be uh, looking to do more of these because I believe uh, that our region is grateful to your ministry. We're grateful to what God has, has, has given to you. And, uh, and we're giving tonight. I truly want to, again, thank God for all those that have come on with us. We are excited about, amen, the leaders. Thank you for the challenge, amen. We're going to uh, sow, amen, tonight, glory to God, because we, amen, would never ask people to do it, amen, that, uh, glory to God, that we're not willing to do, amen. And so I'm, I'm grateful, amen. Also, on last night, we was with you, amen, uh, with the water projects, amen, and glory to God, we're going to make sure that we sow there, because, amen, not only are you uh, reaching the uh, overseas, but I know the Jackson uh, area that, uh, again, Dr. Bailey is, is handling and you're uh, uh, spearheading. And so uh, here in America, amen, you are doing a great work. And so we're just excited uh, for, amen, the connection, the, uh, the love, the, the father and the fathering that you do to us. You help us. Amen. And we truly want you to know that we are extremely grateful and honored. I want you to know we appreciate you coming and being with us. Amen. Taking the time out of your schedule to come and to be with us in Jesus name. Uh, there, the screen again is going to be there on the uh, uh, on the screen again. Amen. We're uh, going to place it there for a few more minutes. Amen. So that those that want to sow into this, amen, great. And then transition, we are seeing mighty, amen, moves of God. We're seeing God do a, a great and marvelous thing. It has truly been amazing. We've been with the apostle on Clubhouse on a daily basis. Amen. People are glory to God on a daily basis. And we just honor you, sir. We love you. We appreciate you. We thank you so much. Amen. Glory to God for what you are doing. Amen. In the earth. Amen. God has used you in a mighty way. I'm going to ask my wife to come. Amen. And she's going to give her comments. We just I always tell you, thank you for that word. And thank you for the message of hope. Amen. I tell you, it's just exciting to just to be to sit at your feet. Amen. Because you're just a wealth of knowledge. It's just some of the things you say are just amazing. And when we were in uh, Fort Lauderdale there in Florida, the at the AI conference with Apostle Cynthia and Billy Thompson, when you said, I am the bank, I was like, oh, okay, how do we get from there? I tell you, that was exciting. And, you know, one of the things that God showed me about I am the bank, that he showed me a vault. And, and in the bank, you know, where the vault is, that's, that's where all the money's at. All right. Amen. And that God has us locked in as we go into this quantum leap and we get these quantum blessings. Amen. God has it locked in for his people. And then he said that money is like uh, water. And I was like, huh? He said, that's a bunch of it. Amen. And so it's going to be flowing our way. Amen. There's different currents and in the way everybody's not going to get the same, but there's going to be a different flow of money coming to God's people. Amen. And I, I just thank you for just opening up that door. Amen. For us to, to see beyond today. Amen. We're not just going to be buying houses, but we're encouraged to buy the land so that the houses can be built on. All right. Amen. And so you're expanding our knowledge base. You're, you're, you're expanding our faith base into what we can do and what we can achieve for the kingdom of God. And as you said, as we sow into you and other ministries and other sow into us, we expect the bountiful blessings because we know what God's word is true. And, and you've taught us so many times how it, important it is to challenge our faith. And sometimes we do, amen, have to, um, be challenged. And I was reading your book, The Thousand, and how one day you said that you were in the service and that the minister at the service had challenged you to sow that thousand seed. And when you came back home to your own home church, how you challenged the church, not just onto you, but into the ministry. And so that not 
so that they could be blessed and that their homes were blessed. I've seen testimonies about all the different blessings that are in Crusaders Church. So thank you so much for being the example. Thank you so much for being a real man of God. Uh, thank you so much for us being, you're being touchable. And, and that's what I appreciate. I remember coming to your church and I was just crying. You know, I was just excited about the atmosphere and just how the spirit of the Lord was just there. And you just, it was, it's, it's amazing. Anytime people, if anybody's on this live or Zoom that uh, is in Chicago and he's there, I'm telling you, it's going to be amazing. As, as, uh, Prop, as Octavia said, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yes, there is a transfer, and we are truly speak that into the lives of the people that are on. Yeah. That transfer is happening. Amen. And we're excited about the transfer. Amen. We were here in London, and I'm getting ready to close, Apostle. Amen. Glory to God. There was, amen, uh, one of the speakers. I can't remember her name specifically, but she said something about, amen, amen. She spoke a prophetic word over your life, being a king maker. And I just want you to know, sir, that we thank God for the king that's in, uh, that's in you. Yeah. Amen. Jesus, amen, is in you. Amen. God, it reigns in you. And glory to God, I believe because of that, amen, you're able to allow that to happen for others. Amen. And so we thank you again, sir. We love you. We appreciate you so much. Yes. Amen. Thank you for all that you do again. Yes. I, on behalf of our True Life International Fellowship Ministries and other ministries that are on with us, I don't want to get into naming because I don't want to miss anybody, but thank all of the leaders, amen, in the region that is on with us. Amen. I believe over 40 amen leaders. Thank you again for coming. Listen, this will not be our last time we're going to do this. Amen. And I thank God for this digital amen tabernacle. God bless you until next time. Amen. Apostle, did you want to pray us out tonight, if you will? And glory to God. Thank you, Lord. I bless everyone as they rest tonight. Lord, I pray that you would even give them revelation as they sleep. When they wake up, they'll have fresh words from you in the months and years to come. Let this be a quantum season for everyone that is watching. I speak yes. grace, blessing over your life. Double shalom in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Double shalom, sir. God bless.